former AFLW player has become the first professional female athlete to be diagnosed with a degenerative brain condition known as CTE. Heather Anderson, who played in a premiership for the Adelaide Crows, died last year. Researchers say she was likely battling the disease for some time. Elias Clore reports. It's been just over six months since Brian Anderson lost his daughter, Heather. Heather was a very quiet, reserved person, but she was very determined and she found good friendship groups through sport. Sport became one of Heather's great passions, and after years of toughing it out in the lower leagues, in 2017 she reached the big time, the AFLW, winning a premiership with the Adelaide Crows in that same year. Heather Anderson, brave as always. Well, the first sort of three, uh, two thirds of the game was fantastic, and then she just cleared the shoulder. Terrible news here for Heather Anderson. It's that oh hell, what, what, what now type thing, but they still won the game. It was euphoria with pain at the same time. It was just a fantastic feeling being at that first grand final, to have them win, and then just that, that edge to it with a, uh, with a dislocated shoulder in that third quarter. Heather's career was plagued by injuries, which included at least one diagnosed concussion. Her mum was concerned about head knocks and she insisted Heather wear a helmet when she played. Heather's mother stopped going to games to watch her, which then led to the story downstream of the pink headgear, which became her trademark. The pink headgear kind of came in as a joke for that between us. Heather retired from football after her grand final triumph at just 23. She returned to a stable job in the army as a medic, but five years later, she took her own life. She was just 28. Suicide is the, it's a tough one. It's a tough way to see your child die. To see your child die anyway uh, is, is tough. But suicide it causes you to re-examine everything, to look at every interaction, a much loved and respected teammate. Today, we remember Heather. Her family donated her brain to the Australian Sports Brain Bank in Sydney to be assessed by Professor Michael Buckland. Heather had low stage CTE, so she had uh, just a few lesions in her brain. Professor Buckland forensically examines brains and looks for abnormal tissue which causes a disease known as chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CTE. He found CTE in Heather's brain and has co-authored an academic paper on his findings published yesterday. The article that's published is describing uh, a very typical uh, case of chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CTE, a uh, very classic uh, pathology of this uh, degenerative brain disease. I'm sort of surprised, but not surprised. And I think now that this report has been published. I'm sort of trying to think about how it might play out for um, female sports people everywhere. It's the first known diagnosis of CTE in a professional female athlete in the world. I think this is really uh, the tip of the iceberg and it's a, a real red flag that now women are participating just as like men are that uh, we're going to start seeing more and more uh, CTE cases in, in women. Neurologist Alan Pearce co-authored the paper. Despite the fact that we know that women have uh, greater rates of concussion, worse symptoms, take longer, um, if we just put that to the side, we, we haven't actually got any long-term uh, evidence until now. Heather's parents believe she likely suffered about four concussions over her career, but Professor Michael Buckland says concussions themselves are not necessarily a cause of CTE. The number of concussions that you have sustained does not correlate particularly well with your risk of getting CTE. What correlates very well is the number of years of contact sports played. And it's thought that that acts as a, that is a proxy for your exposure to these repeated head impacts. 
Heather's parents say they never noticed a significant change in her behaviour. CTE symptoms can vary, so sometimes it can present as Alzheimer's, other times it could mean people just become quite impulsive, but neuropathologists say this is not a mental health issue. And although CTE sufferers can have suicide ideation, that's just another one of the potential symptoms. In other words, this neurological condition can present as depression. Alan Pierce currently works with patients who suspect they may be living with CTE. He says the lack of research in the area makes living with the illness even harder. And so we've had many descriptions of, you know, my brain is broken, um, I don't know what's wrong with me, there's something wrong but I just don't know what's wrong with me. I'm not depressed but I just can't function. Discussion around CTE in Australia has only recently been on the agenda. But in the United States, concussion has been talked about for at least a decade. At the University of Boston, hundreds of brains of former athletes have been analysed by neuropathologist Anne McKee and her team. He might have a little bit of loss. That's actually a, a feature of CTE when it's severe. She's considered the world authority on CTE and in 2009 was one of the first to diagnose it in the brains of former gridiron players. I was stunned, literally stunned. I, and I showed it to my brother, who happened to be a doctor. We both were just like, oh my God, uh, we have to go tell the National Football League. But the National Football League, the governing body of America's richest game, initially rejected her work. They ridiculed me fairly openly, uh, dismissed what I was saying. It was a very uh, uh, humiliating experience and uh, uh, they basically dismissed the work. I think they sensed that this was going to be uh, a huge financial threat to them uh, in terms of what they may have to pay out, uh, in terms of taking care of the players. Troy Aikman took a knee to the head. In 2013, the NFL did eventually pay its former players out to the tune of 780 million US dollars. In Australia, there are currently four lawsuits, including two class actions against the AFL by players who are suffering the effects of head knocks. I think at this point, we shouldn't expect uh, the sports organisation that are gaining so much financially from these sports, we really shouldn't expect them anymore to be able to govern themselves. Alan Pearce says Australia is well behind the US when it comes to CTA diagnosis. We're about 60 brains uh, analysed at the moment. Um, we have about six to 700 pledges, obviously, so you know, it's a matter of time. No major sporting code has provided financial support to the Brain Bank and its research. But the AFL has told the ABC it encourages players to donate their brains to this research. Heather's family are hoping others can follow their lead and donate to the Brain Bank. But they also hope the risk doesn't deter girls and women from doing what they love. Uh, and at this stage, I don't have a dream for the legacy. I would hate for women to stop playing contact sports or um, because of the fear. For the Andersons, this is more than just a game. It's not fair to say life goes on, but you are just a different life now.